Ali was the most difficult thing because I shot on film. But I took a digital approach. Anything which has to break the convention gives you a high. Maniyattam has got his own visual sense. Just by getting a good image doesn't mean anything to me. I'll tell you already I finished the film but still inside me I was very restless. Hello sir, we're very happy to have you on the show. Uh, we, let me begin with a hypothetical question. If you could work with an older filmmaker, living or dead, who would that be? Naturally, there'll be only one, one person, that's Mani Ratna. Older? Older, Mani is oh, one, one year younger, one year younger, same no, age. No, I meant like older as in like, like from the 40s or 30s or 60s or, you know. Sri Dutt was a great actor that inspired me because he broke the stagey cinema. If I say something, people will get a little affected. The Bharatsandar sir was very stagey. I liked some of his films. For example, Achamele, Achamele, which, were, which, were very, which, had, which had cinema in it. Sridhar sir gave me a kind of a... He made me feel young, I don't know. Even at that age, it's, it's for, it, he was a cult at that time. Right. His still photographer, Anar Nachar, Nachar, was staying opposite to my house. When I was in school, every day after shoot, he would come home and develop all those negatives and I will wait to see those negatives. Sridhar films negatives? Yeah. Uttara Vendri would live. Okay, under the 60s. His last face. And moreover, those days, uh, because of the speed of the film, the approach has to be very clinical. Be very thorough with your basics. And you have to have a lot of experience in handling those kind of speed-oriented negatives. And my grandfather was a still photographer. We, basically, we are all horticulturists in my family. Still photography was something which is... Whatever I shot was nothing great. But, I don't know, I felt comfort, the comfort zone in me was happening inside me. That is very important because I was the most disturbed child. My anger was beyond, and nobody can imagine my anger. Even as a child? Yeah. I will take my camera and try, try to capture my dreams. You will know how you cannot do that, but I tried all those things. That evolution can also be seen in my films. When I came to do with the films with Mauli, Pratap Potan, those were initial days. When I, somebody had to give you a break, because I have never been an assistant to anybody. I was out of the institute. But one thing is, I had, a, I had the confidence in me. When I worked with Mauli, I said, let's, let me not, let's, let, let, let me go by the books and learn the, try to learn the industry first. Because I don't know, uh, there, there was a system in place. I have to know, know the system. I have to show it as it developed. There's a, there's, a, there's a lot of production in that. It has to go to the lab. There is a big process. It's maybe that process brought in me silence in me to first finish my project. Suddenly, I found myself not doing anything, which is I could relate to. At the end, I can I, I'll tell you already. I finished a film, but still inside me, I was very restless. It was a two-year gap in between. Imagine me taking up after getting a break, giving this because what I wanted was something. I have to find that space again. But up called me and I did Mindu Murkal. Suddenly, I, I I could feel the comfort zone coming back to me because I I will learn to be part of the system also. I have to I have to know the system and how to correct the system also. If if, if I am wrong, I have to correct myself. If something is wrong on the way, I will not leave, keep quiet. So with 15,000 rupees, the Pratap wanted to start a film. You mean the budget of the film was No, he had, at that time he had only 15,000 rupees in hand. I said, well, let's do it, start, start the film. And the first schedule was in the Kilwak Mental Asylum. And uh, everybody saying, all these mad guys are going to the mad asylum to shoot. <laughs> but there, I was getting closer to what I wanted, I, I think. This is all looking back, I, that's why I... I avoid in giving interviews, but you have to in this profession. That's why I keep it once in a... So after meeting with Kazal Kazai, it took a long time, but I enjoyed every bit. I enjoyed Mauli's film, I'm not saying, but it was a system where at the end I could not see myself. I was Whatever I did at the end, it was some other... It all matters about the kind of cinema you are doing, but I, I respect him for 
trying to marry for giving him so much as gives big space right but his age is again more of a stage cinema before this i have to tell you a story when i was in institute in my last uh, makeup man muttu he wanted to start a film i have not finished my institute he said you be the cameraman that was my first film actually no no before that also another film i forgot <laughs> where we went to tirchi and shot a film called pav punyam near tirchi manapari which is which is well known for muruku and all and it was done by directed by lakshmanan with uh, not many people will know him now but make up and muttu he saw something in me i don't know what he saw and before even writing my exams i started my first film we shot for 10 days that's the money we had we went by bus but the film was never printed or printed also i saw it only in the analyzer that came to a halt then with pradeep shakti who acted as Nay- in nayagan as a villain we shot a film in bangalore on with 16mm camera it's it's called ivara kada this week story it's without a script but having a thought process going berserk with the camera and it was a very it was you be travel by tempo travelers 10 of us we st- we, we 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 stay outside bang outside bang go 10 kilometers the uh, money was running out and we shot in sicilian i enjoyed shooting that because it was not not convention anything which has to break the convention give you a high give you a high after that only again there is a long gap then only mauli came in okay behind this all the thing there's a guy called mani ratnam who is a very popular filmmaker now <laughs> we were very close friends but we desired not to do a film together so that is the story behind us I, we were we were i was not expecting this call neither was he expecting to call me because we were very clear because friendship was different from profession always that one thing i am very clear and money is very too too clear about it that's why we never mix in that that area that's the beauty of being that's an example of good friendship i think that's why i take the maximum advantage of money that he takes the maximum advantage from me the sense creatively i'm saying who we put sure what happened after when director fazil had seen mind mother kadal kadal in one of the projections and that is another another alien place to me because they were very uh, the producer had finished at that time had finished uh, uh, my dear kutita than which is the biggest hit in the country and uh, after the first schedule i remember jijo telling me you are you are consistently inconsistent okay because they were very meticulous i am also meticulous but in another way but i i but me jumping and doing going again certain things he is not he was not able to at that time i didn't answer all i didn't have the do answers because i was trying out something which at the time it might be a small thing but that reflection could have been seen in that one shot of who i put can be seen later in my lifetime okay and that my old friend mr mariyatnam called me okay which is out of the blue because we went from office to office for doing ad films of feature films before all these things started money would have told you all those things right from devi films to this film to that film both of us will go after uh, meeting producers and all when money got all pallavi and pallavi certain things decision has to be taken i understood that i appreciate that so it should be and again we started monoragam coming back after poor puchira bhai started monoragam from main to more kal kal i was being poor puchira va then i did for ah siluraj nidan nidan the koy in between all this film i was trying to see what was happening at the end of the film something has to happen to me like an internal change no it has to make me see for example if it, how much have i expressed through the visual am i is the visual talking is it hitting me back just by getting a good image just doesn't mean anything to me it doesn't give me any high so i was going in search of something money was going in search of something else we did not know already from puve puchirwa i decided to do 
go the way which has to every day because I know the system now certain things can be done. I, because when you go there, you cannot be childish and do things which will upset the project itself. It should help the project, not disturb the project. Because this is the only thing I got in my life. Right. After from childhood for 15 years or 20, 15, 16 years, I've been going only in search of this. Because when other people found solace and studying in school, I was the one who was most disturbed because I could not take school. School was the most disturbing thing in my life. So this is the only thing that was giving me what I needed. I, I felt at home also. So, for now, so slowly that thing, whatever I mean, I did with money is out of what is called for and pushing the boundaries. Because here is a man who knows what I, who, who, who takes me seriously. Once you're exposed, it can't be done later. So certain tests, I will do it for my sake. Right. And I also, the director also, being money, I'll also, I, I'll push my, I push my boundaries through budget money. Because he understands it. Very few people understand. Now it's all, uh, even now it's not understood. The, the real crux of it's not understood correctly. That's what I think. Yeah. Because after Alaypai, even okay, can money, money could push me and get me the best. You spoke about uh, working with Mauli and Pratap Potan, but even in those films, there, there are certain things that, that one remembers. Like, for instance, I remember in Va in the Pakkam, there is a song called Ananda Dagam, where uh, you keep changing, it takes place largely in a bedroom, and you keep changing focus between the, he, the man and the woman. Uh, yeah, for yeah, different yeah. lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, in, again, in Meendu Moru Kadal Kadai, I remember uh, probably one of the earliest, because in the 80s, your style of lighting was identified with a lot of contrasts and backlighting and all that. So I remember like a classroom filled with uh, wooden desks and the light was bouncing off the top of each desk. Now, even that's what I'm talking about, the pre Maniratnam period, you had already begun to kind of express yourself a bit, would you say? Yeah, yeah definitely. In Maori's film, the, like you said, uh, there was a first, first, shed, first schedule of the film. A lot of things were done. At the end, the film was of a different caliber. So, film's narrative has to fall with the visual narrative. Technically speaking, there are a lot of things I did in Maori's film. But it, it was a different uh, story game altogether. Okay? The highlights of Mindy Markal Kazai, it was not there. Because if I think you would have seen a low band, low band quality. But there's a lot of things I, uh, uh, I shot in a white screen, 35 mm white screen. And uh, very few backlights were there. The backlights I, was, I brought it only in Mahunuragam. And with Mahunuragam, I stopped. One film only I, I, I'll try. It will not repeat again. Okay. It might come later in some other one or two shots. It, it, I never tried to repeat. I tried not to repeat myself. There have been director cinematographer combinations before, like you mentioned Sridhar. So Sridhar and Vincent. Uh, there have been um, Ashok Kumar and Mahindran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're like many. They did a lot of films together. But somehow, when people talk of director cinematographer collaborations, the first name that pops to them is Mani Ratham and P. C. Shiram. What do you think? Why do you think? This particular combination, you guys became such rock stars in people's minds. Actually, I think uh, Ashok Kumar and Mahendra were rock stars, according to me. And their films from Nanjatekila to Udri Pukul, their work was very this one. But the world has started changing. Slowly, the progress of it, uh, videos were out at VHS format. Things were changing. People's exposure was more and more slowly. Maybe we, we came in at that time. I wanted to keep breaking things, and money was a guy whom I always used to all show my anger and all that thing in the work. And he also knew what I was doing. He will go, once if I say something, he will also go, come up something that bizarre, which I will try to, somewhere it worked, I don't know. That's why we keep, uh, we don't do continuously films. Your immediate predecessors, you spoke of Ashok Kumar, but also Balu Mahindra, they kind of worked in a more naturalistic kind of lighting. Whereas when you made a name for yourself, you kind of broke away from that style. Uh, one one shot I distinctly remember on Mauna Ragam is when after Oho Meham Mandadur, Revati sings that song, uh, she gets drenched in the rain and she comes back home. And, uh, you know, she doesn't know that Mohan and his family are still uh, are still waiting for her. So she comes home, she, she, she sees them, she's shocked. And her mother drags her inside to kind of change out of her clothes and get dressed and all that. 
And uh, so to clean her face, the mother forces her over the wash basin to wash her face. Now, usually in a, in a bathroom, the, the light is over the wash basin. So, you know, if anything, you'd expect the light to be on, on her head. But this, when she, when she approaches the wash basin, you know, the light seems to be coming from underneath. So that was like, I was like, wow, that's, that's quite amazing. But that's not my question. My question is, at what point did you start realizing that you were kind of finding a style or something that, that you were evolving on your own? You know, like at what point did that happen? All these things are personal experiences to me. Because I, whatever you're talking about, the, the wash, uh, I experienced it. Right. Because in my house, there'll be a light on top of it. When my, my sisters are saying, I could see some glow happening there. It's so only that experience I translated into film. And also at that time, the film speed had also sensitivity increased. And because that's very important to say now, because orals is very difficult to overall have a uh, pattern of contrast. I was only recreating what, what was there. But slightly, it got, sometimes it got exaggerated a little bit more. For example, in film and like Nayagan, Niwar, Kal, Sankitam and all, nobody thought all this digital is going to come. Only the screen was fascinating. I was always fascinated by this big screen. If you take Mauna Ragam or Nayagan, every film it had it for the story only, whatever necessary for it. Because in Agnachitram, we, 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 we very consciously took a decision and we did a lot of tests for that. Because I have to be very sure of certain things. I remember for the Mirage, I did a test. When it was projected, the operator got scared because he thought something is wrong with the projector. I never realized from that angle. I was trying to do something to create a mirage because it's called Agni Chatram. It's naturally you see a mirage. Right. I, we, I was, we were sweating it out only in the sun. So we didn't, I, I used very little of that thing in the film because it was disturbing the storytelling. The, the mirage you're talking about, the opening credits. No, no, there, there are a lot, very few are there in the where film. The, where the heat is shown. Wherever the heat is shown, uh, I wanted to use a lot of mirage. Right. But I reduced it completely because it was disturbing the story form. Okay, okay, okay. I'm saying to that extreme, we tested out. Okay. So we found another alternative, we kept going, that's it. But there is still some, a couple of mirage no, very, shots. Very few shots are there. Right. You just symbolize the Agni Nachatram. You, you just mentioned Agni Nachatram. It's the story of... Uh, a bigamist with two sons who are fighting with each other. It's a, basically a domestic drama. So when you did that sci-fi kind of lighting, what were you thinking of? Other than pushing the envelope, wh what was in your mind? How did that lighting kind of fit into the story according to the way you looked at it? When you're constantly experimenting with lights, certain things happen inside you. When the, when the perforations are moving, lights' reactions change. If the highlights slightly a little bit on the higher side, it starts reacting. Suddenly you grab on that and put it into another style. That's where it, I think it happened. Okay. And both of us wanted all our films, we, both of us in all those, because we were only 24 or 7, we were only talking about cinema. We will, we will write our short breakdowns in paper overnight. And I will be keeping it, it will be in the hotel, uh, one of the bills will be written. <laughs> Okay, I'll be in my pocket and he'll, he'll have a copy. But I will not, he will, he will remember everything clearly. But that's the kind of cinema I got used to it and still I'm only on that cinema I would like to. But the moment I'm not in that cinema, I will stop doing films. Now you've said that a, a cinematographer is the co-author of a film. Would you say that you helped Maniratnam find his visual style? Yes, why not? Maniratnam has got his own visual sense. Right. It's not that I gave him this, he, he has got it. That's why I was, I was able to push it. Because both of us, have, we have discussed all these things as a film students, not as a director cameraman. Before all these things, we wanted to do, we wanted to imagine the kind of uh, beating I had gone through in my life. It is only to uh, show the Trying for the impossible, I can and tell you, so long, tell you. Like, so you're only, you're always, you're only talking about those things, about film, all those things. Right. <coughs> and Money knew what was all these things about. He will be aware, but quiet about it. 
I'll be very loud and say it out very strongly to him. He will quietly yes, say yes. He would have done this. Uh, he knows I will go berserk. And uh, that's what I would like. I, I can go with only people who understand how it's been done. So when you say you would talk about cinema, would you watch a film together and then discuss it? Or how would it... Uh... The only way to see cinema is in theatres. I would watch it every day a film. Now I've stopped watching films for some time. Okay. I watch the computer. I go home and watch the TV. That is imposing me too much. I want to get away from that to have be myself. I have a whole lot of DVDs in front of my house. I, I ask all my sons to see, but I don't see it. Because suddenly, there's too much to see. And I'm very worried. I said, at a time, I, I'll be away from that. Before, I used to de see every, every day two films. And when money and he used to join us on, on a Fridays to watch a film. Okay. <laughs> because there are other people who had curriculums very important. For me, there's no curriculum. My curriculum was only cinema. So I will be enjoying films throughout the week, but they will join me on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. If money has that awareness, why go into this complicated thing? You know? Okay. Another friend from those days who, and with whom you discuss a lot of films is Kamala Hassan. And there is this famous, uh, uh, you know, what, what came to be known as the group that used to gather at Samco Hotel and talk about a lot of cinema. What were some of those conversations like? See, uh, Samco was a place where a lot of filmmakers joined together. A lot of filmmakers. At that time, there was a famous film from Rudraya. Avala Paditha. Rudraya, and all, they will all be sitting next to him. I was a film institute student at that time. Imagine they were doing Avala Paditha, it's a cult film. So, that was a place where it's economical to be. The parallel cinema of Tamil cinema was there. After movie, watching a movie, come back to Sam Kohavati at that time or before going off. Talking about, uh, talking about cinema only, that's all. I don't even remember what I sp We spoke only about cinema. Okay, okay. Because at that time, very few people came into this media. It was not the app for everybody. Everybody chose a bit to be a doctor or an engineer or something else. I don't know. I chose film line and uh, rebels of those days. Right. The only place to assemble is Samko. When you accept a film, do you need to buy into it philosophically or, or you know, kind of believe the story it's telling or there are there times you've accepted films for other reasons like, let's say, you know, the, the opportunity to play with a new kind of technology or maybe even like a great paycheck or something like that? Before I had the strength to wait, sometimes due to some personal reasons in my life, I lost the strength to wait. So I started accepting films. I had to work, keep working. And to, to keep my mind occupied, I had to keep working. Okay. And also paycheck is also there. I have to be this one. But more than, the, more than anything else, I had to be working. To keep my mind, because before I had a strength to wait for two years. And I was, because also I was busy doing ads. You should take all the BSA seller commercials. Right. If you're all BPA, Sanyo commercials. Rasana commercials, there are volumes. Right. I could afford to say no to feature film. That is also very important to under this point to underline because the economics are very high in that. Whatever I am today is because of those days. In a month, 20 days I was shooting ads in Chennai itself. I, I didn't I don't have, nowadays I have to go to Bombay. I was shooting in Chennai and run under our own production. All those things gave me the strength to wait for the correct script also. Right. Recently, for the past five, six years, I don't have the strength to wait. I have, uh, I, uh, but at the same time, I think I got the best of the films needed. Okay. Maybe a couple of the films I, you know, I, I won't talk much highly about it. But that happens to, because the volume of films I have done is very less. The Sadhana Pata, the last five, six years, it's gone up like anything because I have started doing three films in a year. Before, I used to do one film in three years. You used the Cinemascope lens for the first time in Geetanjali. Yeah. Do you, uh, how was that experience? Do you pick up things easily? You should have people around you who know everything here. It's easy. Okay. If you, if you know thing, if you know certain basics, you just keep going, that's it. So I'm the not, basics don't change? What you see inside the frame is important. More, uh, uh, suddenly uh, the, the equipment is given more importance. It is important, but today 
because of digital progression every day, from 2K suddenly it's come to 8K, it is, it is important, but I think that is not the only important thing. That, to me, that is negligible. Okay. Why did you ask me that question? Because I was wondering if, uh, when, when I was speaking to Maniratham for the book, and uh, he said one of the things that, that he imagined while, while thinking about Geetanjali was a huge screen and two people standing there in a corner. You know, you could do things like that. Uh, so I was wondering if you were experimenting with the ratios and yeah. things like that. Yeah, yeah, that is there. That is, see, it, it, it goes without saying. When you change the format, you change the style. Right. See, the anamorphic has got its own strength. Okay, so what all should not be done can be done. Right. <laughs> Along with that format, it comes. I don't want. To, I don't have to explain those things. Right. That bigness of seeing it in a DV theater at that time was phenomenal. And uh, imagine, when you get something, use it to the maximum. Right. Push it to the maximum to the level. That's what we did in Geetanjali. Yeah. So I was, I was also thinking of something that, do you have a memory of, of you know, being very elated because you could do one particular thing that you could not do in, let's say, Nayagan or uh, Agni Nachatram because you shot in a more squarish kind of format? No, no, no. no, no. That's uh, over. Yesterday is over. Oh, yesterday is over. <laughs> okay. Maniratna made three iconic love stories for three generations, Mauna Ragam, uh, Alay Paide, and O Kadal Kanmani. You were the cinematographer on all these three films, and they're all 15 years apart, roughly. Now, apart from the, obviously, the technological advancements uh, that happened between each of these films, was there any other difference in the way you approached them? There will be a lot of backstory to everything here, but I can't. Do you want your backstories? No, I don't know how to analyze and tell you. Everything, every element. You can tell me or you can tell me. You know, if I try, I'm trying, I'll try to theorize everything in life. That's wonderful. No, I don't want to theorize because I had to do a lot of things in life. If you put everything into theory, how, how, I don't need. Give us one, 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 one idea behind each film. One driving idea behind each film. See, for example, in OK Kanmuni, the color palettes come, he said we'll play with color palettes. He just said that word. I pushed it to the other extreme. And if the, the kind of color, uh, if it's a color palette, when you see it on screen, you can feel it. Right. But it was, uh, I didn't do big homework and all on that. Please be very clear. I didn't sit and think, well, no. I, this is the only thing I know in my life. Ali Pahide was the most difficult thing because I shot on film. Right. But I took a digital approach. If you, ah, now I can try to terrorize you. Because I don't want to get into that mood. I like by the uh, single frame, I had to, what is done now on the post, I had to do it on camera. Right. How I did it, why I did it, I don't know. Right. I did it. I got committed myself telling money we should have the camera moving continuously and all. Because the title, all those things will be there. Looking back into that, I did the DI. Which is now done post on the pre. Yeah. If I go go, go in it, how do, how it is it's boring here? It's not boring, sir. Yeah, your, yeah. your instincts are amazing. That's what I'm like to to kind of imagine the the final output without a post situation and it, like right there. That's amazing. No, no, no. it's not amazing. <laughs> if you are in that zone, if you don't do it, then uh, it's nothing. It's. Uh, Half the time we are holding ourselves back. That's the only thing I know. And I don't hold myself back when I'm doing a film. For example, in Padman, I use white on the walls because it is something people will try to avoid inside a room. I said something intuitively; it happened. I did a definition. I came. That's it. To me, that's all. There's no aura behind that because it's the only thing you know. You better do it correctly. Better do it correctly means try at least try. And see, do you don't go wrong because you are accountable for that. Right. I take that back. I do. But if I don't do that, then it's all, it's there in every profession. It's there. It's a must for every profession. Has there been a time you tried something and it went wrong, didn't work the, 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 the way you expected it to? If something goes wrong, I am accountable. I have to stop it immediately. Okay. Because in film, what you shoot at that time is that. You cannot go back on that. Right. So uh, you have to be very clear on that. You okay. can't say, I'm sorry, I'll do it again. <laughs> so there's one school of cinematography that says that cinematography should not be noticed and it should serve the story invisibly. There's another school that says 
you know, it's okay to be flamboyant and, you know, move the, uh, you know, do things that are noticeable. In your long and illustrious career, how have you handled this uh, dichotomy? Everybody is entitled to their opinion. I am not bothered about that. Okay. I do what my conscience says, I keep going it. What the film needs only I've done. I have kept quiet in films, I have to keep quiet. But keeping quiet alone is not my job. You directed a film with Kamala Hassan, Kurudi Punal. You also shot it. And yeah. similarly, you have shot and directed other films also. Yeah, yeah. What is the biggest challenge of doing two jobs, that is direction and cinematography, on the same film? I'm not made for that. So that's why I stopped doing it. Some people have the capacity to do it. I, am, I don't have, I'm not made for that. That's why I stood away from that. Whatever I did, it's past. Suddenly I realized, enough is enough. I'll do only one job. Will we see you directing a film again? Yeah, I will direct, but I will not photograph. Okay. Recently, Christopher Nolan was in India to talk about the glories of film. Uh, you shot India's first HD digital feature film, which is Vanam Vasapadum. Yeah. What are your thoughts on this whole film versus digital debate? See, when I shot Manam Vasapadam, digital was in the very initial stages. Film has got a hundred years of story, a hundred years of history. Digital, what has happened is within five years it has reached another level. It will be debatable. Film is film. I, let me not go into the past glory. Film has got its own beauty. Like the world has changed, you can't sit, uh, sit and look at yesterday's beauty. You can only keep it inside you and enjoy it. So no point in talking about uh, Christopher Nolan. You should be nostalgic about the cinema. I can be nostalgic. But I would like to keep it myself because there are other things to be done on digital. There are, because again, the, the need is, content is always needed. In digital, within the last four years, so much of growth has happened. Okay. To get into film, there was a lot of stages. Here, the stages have changed. Things yeah. have changed. Suddenly, everybody has got a camera. Everybody, that's good. I think that's a real form of art. Everybody should be access to art. Only not a few to do it. That's the best thing. I always believe in freedom. Everybody should have a camera and shoot it. At the end, what sustained after a couple of years, from there you can see real art coming out. First two years, you'll be thrilled about it. Later, you, they will, people who are trying to search will get it. People who think it's, it, it will be a passing phase only. That's what is happening today. And it has come to the same, at the same time, digital has also come to a right level, like the film level. Now it's come going go out to 8K. The latitude is very good, all those things, which is very technical for me to talk. Is there anything that today digital cannot do that you miss that film could do, like, like a texture or the blacks? Yeah, or so many things are there. Like, can the you same, name a couple? No. If I start going in the, uh, what is happening is there's projection. Everything has changed. Why if you go into it, you have to talk about whole whole range. Like a couple of things. I'll like tell you. When film was there, you had a film projection. Everything was different. Now everything is gone in digital format. You cannot bring back film. Even if you bring back film, shoot and film, you have to do in India, I'm saying, because it's a very difficult India the volume, country of volume. There are so many things in film, but at the same time, there are, it doesn't only in shooting, it's in project, it has to be projected. Again, if you digitalize it, take it to digital format, have a digital projection, no point in that. Okay. That's, but till the end, till Kodak closed, I shot only on film. That is when I, when I was shooting Ashanka's eye, throughout the film, I shot it on film. At the end, when Kodak closed it, and allowed only one song I shot on digital. Kacharata para. Again, I tried. In Shamita, I tried. But what had happened, it, all the lab had closed. I could not take the risk. Something goes wrong in sound developing. Some edge fog. There's no accountability. First schedule, I shot in film. Shamita, I shot in film. I could see a lot of edge fog because Kodak had closed. So we had to get from people who had it, and what happened was, and they were developing in new, new areas, the problem was coming. So I stopped that also. Okay. Now you spoke about starting with still photography and then, you know, uh, experimenting with it, with it a lot. But today a lot of people 
because access to cameras has become so easy, they go directly to motion uh, pictures, right? Without that still photography stage. Do you feel that there is something that that shooting stills teaches a cinematographer that directly going and shooting cannot? No, no, everybody has to have their own way of doing things. Own journey, okay. The journey is very important. I, 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 because I did certain things, that cannot be the only way. Right. It depends upon the individual. Okay. But there is a long process. It cannot happen immediately. Everything will take a long process and you have to learn a lot and observe a lot before letting yourself loose. You just spoke about Shankar's eye. It's a mega production, lots of special effects. Can you name one thing that was especially challenging or technologically difficult that, that you found like really difficult to do? See, when you start doing composite photography, uh, as a cinematographer, I find it a little boring because the CG guy comes in. I find my frames have been stolen by some other guy. I will very soon, I will go in that area also because I will be shooting this plate and also be creating that plate. My mind, my mind is on that. But I don't want to share that frame with anybody else. It's too personal. So when I'm seeing a song like Marisal Item, where you know, there's so much of uh, visual effects going on, is it more of cinematography or more of effects? What is the balance? No, that particular song, 60% is photography, 40% okay. is CG. But that CG is basics. Okay, okay. Like, you know, there's, there's a motorbike that changes. Yeah, I think. The, uh, those things are now nothing. Okay. Way back when I did a film called Kadar Adhinam, I have done one song, Ro, uh, Roja, Roja, the song. When we, did, when we did the CG, we didn't have the correct platform to gauge the exposure or not. I still, we did it, okay. I'm saying, Today, when we are able to do it uh, with ease, because but only the only scale, nothing is real. Before you should trust this is a real visual. Now everything can be manipulated. But in the initial days, we found it very difficult when doing ads with the computer graphics. Dendra is good in that area. I kept it at distance because I found it difficult to understand at that time. But suddenly, for the past couple of years back, I got into that flair. I'm able to relate to that area. I'm, I'm working on that also. Fantastic. Is there such a thing as a movie that you are 100% satisfied with or something that came close? Before you know what happens, this film is over here. That's how, how I see it. On the last day of shooting, you felt, oh my god, I've achieved almost what I wanted to do in this film. Does that happen all the time? How is it possible to happen? Yes, sir, I'm asking. Mm. It can happen only at the end of, end of your life. <laughs> you have been a cinematographer for over 30 years now. What, when you look at Tamil cinema, uh, let's just restrict it to Tamil cinema. When you look at Tamil film cinematography today, what do you think of it has, are there more directors today that are stronger about uh, what visuals they want? Yeah, definitely. There's a, because the volume is so much, you can see a lot of talents around. A lot of good directors, good cinematographers are there. Your three biggest collaborators, Mani Ratnam, Kamalasan and Balki, I would like you to name one film that is memorable for you. I know all these films, it's a difficult question, but one film that's memorable for you and one shot, if you could take us through it from each of these people's films. I can say one, one film each director. Yeah. With money, I can see Mahmoud Ragam. Not as only as a cinematographer, as a film, as a cinema lover. It can be, it had a lot of things plus a lot of uh, As a technician, I could say Alay okay. ba Balki's power was challenging to reverse the proportion. To show somebody, somebody who is really tall, make him short. Not by special effects, by change of perspectives, by altering the perspectives. With Kamala Hassan, I'll say Kurdi Punal. Not Apura Sagadar. No, okay. Apura Sagadar was a technical challenge. Kurdi Punal's content was very inspiring to me. And it is a very, it's, I shot the whole film in close up only. Okay. Maybe Kamal became aware of it later, I don't know. I shot the whole film in a very close proximity. Very few white shots will be there. Apura Sagadar is another. It's a very old story for me. I don't remember it.
You don't remember. That's a very challenging thing. I don't deny that. It was a very difficult thing. But uh, it's a very, uh, it's like you can't say satisfying is only Kurdi Kur to me. But have you seen the trailer for uh, Shah Rukh Khan Zero? No. Where he plays a. No, I've not heard about it. I've not seen the trailer. Okay. I just wanted to ask you if you could like figure out something that, that is. That no, is now it's very simple. Now you can shrink anybody up, take it anybody up. <laughs> Today it will have equal, the same effort as you put in from some other pr perspective. That's all. Okay. All right, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Yeah.